Good morning, everybody. Boy, it's good to see everybody out this morning. Wonderful to see everyone this morning. Beautiful day that the Lord has made. Let's rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. All right. Um, one quick announcement. We're just going to make a general announcement. Uh, believe it or not, we're getting a little head start on doing a Christmas program this year. And if you'd like to be a, a part of that, just let me know. I'll open it up to everybody. If you'd like to be a part of the Christmas program, just let me know. Come see me. We'll make sure you get a part in it, all right? We well, was not able to do one for a couple years, a, a, a play, and we looking forward to it this year, I tell you, all right? We got something cooked up. Now, I've asked Carlos to do something this morning. If you weren't here for devotion, we sung a song. What page number is that, Carlos? 103, if you want to get your books and go ahead and open up, 103. We sung a song. So if you would, look, open your books to page 103 and look at the words of that song. Look at the title of that song. I don't know why, but that song has reverberated through everything that's went on in Sunday school as far as our class was concerned. I'm sure it's with others. And I thought, what a great mission statement that song would be for our church. Simply, more about Jesus. More about Jesus. If we put Him a whole lot more in everything we do, Boy, what blessings they'd be. Amen? Amen? So, would you do this as we sing this? Would you, and I'm like, I'm, I had to do this this morning. What more could I do to show people about Jesus? Every one of us can do more. I know that. But I'm reflecting on myself this morning. Would you do that as we sing it? Just think, what more can you do? To reflect Jesus. Amen. More about Jesus would I know. I, would you sing it with us? Sing it and reflect as we do it. I was in G, boys. All right. <clears throat>
more, more about Jesus, more of His saving fullness, see, more of His love who died for me. Amen. Amen. Make her lot, life a lot better. We talk more about Jesus and less about COVID. More about Jesus and less about the government. Amen. Yep. More about Jesus and less about the price of gas. Amen. Yep. More, more about Jesus. Amen. Yeah. I like what Stephen had on his heart there. We've Amen. had a, we've got a world that's lost and dying. And all they're hearing is more about the bad stuff. Yeah. We need to do more about Jesus. Amen. Turn to 374. This is what we've got to do. Press on. It won't be long. <coughs> 374. Open your eyes and see the face of your Savior. Amen. 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 I made it. Amen. There's a lady that wrote a lot of songs in this book, and Stephen and I were talking about it. Was blind from birth. Yeah. Or not from birth. She was blind at a young, at a very young age as an infant child. Her, her parents had put a salve on her eyes, a home remedy that blinded her. And from her memory on, she was never able to remember. Wrote a lot of the songs. Fanny Crosby is her name. 
for a lot of songs we sing in this book. But she was asked by a minister one time later on in life, said, don't you wish you ever could, you could have seen that you had your vision? She said, no, I don't. Because the first face I'll see, yeah. Yeah. the first face I'll see will be Amen. the face of my Savior. Amen. Amen. Boy, ain't that amazing? Amen. Boy, I tell you what, stand to your feet if you feel like it. Turn to 240. And if you're going to be there when the road's called up yonder, just let Jackson County know that Letterbox is in service this morning. <laughs> Trumpet of the Lord shall sound, and time shall be no more. And the morning breaks eternal, bright and fair. When the saved of earth shall gather over on the other shore, and the roll is called of yonder, I'll be there. sing this morning for us. about a song we hadn't done in a while. We'll do it for him. Yes. 
save me from sin. The journey's been long, now I'm nearing the end. What a journey, what a journey it's been. Now I started on this journey years ago. they wish they hadn't have done and everybody has things they wish they had have done but I don't regret a mile I've traveled for Jesus Amen. I don't regret a time Amen. I've gathered with His people yeah. I don't regret a prayer that I've prayed to my Maker Amen. don't regret a song that I've sung out of my spirit to the Lord Amen. God's good, Amen. Amen He's good, it's good to see everybody this morning and we trust you've had a good week and we pray, Lord's blessings been on you. If you're visiting with us, we're tickled to death to have you. Feel free to worship God with us today. And the uh, altar's open. It won't close until Jesus comes and gets the church. Amen. And uh, when He closes the altar, ain't no way we could open it. Amen. He's the one who makes the altar call. And uh, feel free to pray at any time. Altar, seat, wherever. You just do as God says to do. I preached last Sunday about a preview of Calvary. And I said we are going to go through these little series of messages that God had laid upon my heart. And I need you to go and start with me in the book of Daniel this morning. If you got your Bible, chapter 12. And today, if it's the Lord's will, we're going to look at a preview of judgment. A preview of judgment. And there's previews all throughout the Bible. And the reason there is previews all throughout the Bible is God wants you to be prepared when you die. <clears throat> because He wants you to come up where He's at. Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you. Amen. Now you may be sitting here today or maybe watching at home and you might think that God don't even have a clue who you are or what, you, what you've done or <clears throat> could care less about you, but you're wrong. God made you for a purpose. Amen. 
And when he said, I went to prepare a place for you, he meant he's got room for you in heaven. And he wants you there. Amen. If he didn't want you there, then it wouldn't have said, for God sent his only son uh, to die for the whole world. Amen. His only begotten son, that whosoever, we're all whosoever's. Amen. Believe within him should not perish, but have everlasting life. <clears throat> but we're going to start in the book of Daniel, the 12th chapter. And I've got several scriptures marked and referenced here that we're going to go to. And you just need to keep your Bible because all throughout the Bible, God is trying to prepare man to get ready to meet Him. Uh, regardless of what you think, friend, or regardless of what you've been told, you're not just going to live here and die and that be it. There's an eternity that's waiting on your soul. And what you do with Jesus determines where you'll spend eternity at. <clears throat> if you die saved, then you'll go to heaven saved. If you die lost, then you'll end up in hell lost. And there's no getting you out. There's no way. Uh, n nothing can change the fact of what happens after that you die. And uh, we're going to look at this preview here today. As I said, we're going to go on several different... And I desire your prayers. <clears throat> we don't feel the best today. Uh, I've had one of them weeks where everywhere I've turned around, I've stared the devil right in the face. Y'all ever had one of them weeks? The only peace I've had this week is when I went home to my little family or been with our church or been with a friend. That's the only... I mean, the devil knew what was coming out of this message and he was going to try to stop it. I might die in the pulpit preaching this today, but it's got to come out. Amen. It absolutely has to come out. Because I am concerned about people's souls. And I'm concerned that people are not taking their souls seriously. I'm, I'm concerned that people are just trying to live life and go on and make the best of it. Friend, listen. God loves you. Amen? Amen. And the first thing you need to know about God is He's the good guy. He ain't the bad guy. And He come that He come that you can have life and have it more abundantly. Amen. And God's just that way. And, and He wants you to have good. It's, it's His good pleasure to give you good. But you've got to understand who He is. Now, I thought about this today. Uh, you know, we have, uh, every one of us have, have had somebody in our lives uh, that really need a touch from God. Amen. Amen. Anybody know somebody that really needs a touch from God? Amen. We all do. I was thinking this morning of the of the sick that we've been praying for in our church, and we're going to keep on praying. We're going to lift up Brother Billy. God's going to heal Brother Billy. Amen. We're going to lift him up. And there's uh, Sister Ruth Parker. Bless her heart. She she buried a brother Wednesday, and she's got another brother that's on life support right now. That that unless the Lord just touches him and a miracle happens. Then he's that he's going to leave out of this place, and 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 she needs our prayers, Amen. We've been praying for a, a healer, a healing for Connor. It's going to happen, Amen. Uh, we just keep praying, and we we just got to keep lifting each other up. All throughout this church, there is people that have people in their families, or you, and, and we need God's touch, Amen. And God is able. How many believe it? God is able. And when we lay them at God's feet, as I preached a few weeks ago, God's got big shoulders, and He'll lay them on His shoulders, and He'll pack them where you and I came. So stand with me if you will today. Let's read this together. And I want you to pray. When I pray, I want you to pray. Whoever it is that's on your heart that you want to see God touch, that you want to see God save, how many knows those sin sick the sickest of all? Whoever it is, whatever it is, situation you need God in, God has His ear attended to this place right now. Believe that. Believe that. Daniel 12 and 1, And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince, which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since. Boy, we're seeing things, ain't we? And the Bible said, uh, uh, Such... As never was since there was a nation even to that same time. And at a time thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book, and many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. 
Now, Father, I love You today and I thank You for Your promises in Your Word. God, we believe with everything in us, we believe, God, that You're coming very soon. That judgment is fixing to happen. That things are going to take place on this earth that has never been seen before. But God, You're all in control today and we know that, Father. And we thank You for that. God, there's many on our heart today that need a great touch from You. I pray, God, You intervene in every life, every situation, every sickness, the soul that is nearest hell right now, whether they're seated in this congregation, whether they're sitting in a park bench in Chicago, Illinois. If they're about to die, oh God, have mercy on them and let them be saved before they die. God, I pray that You would just give us wisdom through this Word. The devil tried his best to keep us from studying this week. He's been against us, Lord, all week long. But God, greater is He that's in us than he that's in the world. And you'll bring out this through the anointing, what needs to be brought out. I believe you'll open eyes. I believe you'll help people. I believe you'll encourage people. And I believe you'll direct people today. I pray, God, that you just be with us now. Hear every prayer that's going up. Heal every sick God. We just love you today. We know you're here. We know you're here, God. And we thank you that you are. Hear us, Lord, as we pray. And have mercy on this nation for the very churches sake. We love you and honor you. In Jesus' precious name, we ask these things. And the church said, Amen. Amen. A preview of judgment. A preview of judgment. God's got a way that judgment's going to happen. Now the Bible said in Hebrews 9 and 27, one of the most popular quoted scriptures in the Bible, It'll tell you that is as it is appointed unto man once to die, and after this comes the judgment. Amen. Uh, so we know that we have an appointment. But notice in Hebrews 9 and 27, it says, as it is appointed unto man once to die. Amen. It's very important that you don't take the word once out of that. Why is that, preacher? Because Jesus is going to give everybody opportunity to be born twice. You say, born twice. Well, I was born on... January the 14th, 77. Don't remember a thing about it. Because that was the first time I ever drawed a breath on the outside of the womb. I mean, I was alive in the womb. These people that think babies ain't alive in the womb ain't got enough sense that God gave a hog. Amen. But they're, they're alive. They're very much alive. And when I draw my first breath outside the womb was January 14th, 1977. They tell me it was a cold time. I don't know. I don't remember. But I remember April the 7th, 2002. I'll never forget that. That was 25 years later. That's when the Lord came into my heart and I was born again. You may not remember the exact date. You, you may not remember uh, much about that time, but you'll remember when Jesus came into your heart. Amen? You'll remember where it's at. You'll remember the experience that you had. Because that's a born again experience. Amen? So it's just appointed unto you once to die. Why is that? Because it says in Second Peter, or in First Peter uh, chapter 5, it said it's not God's will that any would perish, but that all would come to repentance. God wants you to be saved. We've established that. Amen? We established that last week in the message on the preview of Calvary. The whole reason that Calvary took place is because He wants you to be saved. Amen. And, and it's so easy that the littlest child that's in this place today can understand God's salvation. Amen. That if you believe with your heart the Lord Jesus and you confess Him with your mouth, thou shalt be saved. I'm glad we're saved by grace. I'm glad there ain't degrees of salvation. I'm glad that we don't have to live a certain way for 40 years and see if we've done good enough to get there. We're saved by grace. Amen. Through faith, which is the gift of God. That not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. But I begin to think about this judgment that is coming. You know what? Judgment becomes a reality. It became a reality in the Bible after sin defiled the relationship with man and God. It became a reality that there was going to have to be a redemption. And the only way to tell if there was a redemption was somebody I was going to have to make a judgment uh, to see if this person had been redeemed. Now judgment is a ruling. I looked up some different definitions of judgment. It's a ruling. It's the ability to make sense
sound decisions. It's a sentence given by a judge in a court of law. That's what a judgment is. The high judge gives the sentence. Amen. Now I thought about this. There are two different types of judgment in the Bible. And I'm going to show you where they're at in just a second. There's two different types of judgment. Now you either stand in judgment as a lost person or you'll stand in judgment as a saved person. Amen. Jesus is coming back and He's going to separate the sheep from the goats. But when you die, you're going to have to stand in judgment. Amen. And, and, and listen, if your name is not found written in the book of life, listen, let me tell you now, This is you may see this different and that's okay. I, but I believe that when I die, I believe Jesus is going to be the first person I see because I put my faith in Him. I put my trust in Him. And I believe that when I die, I'll stand before the judgment seat of Christ. And you say, what's the judgment seat of Christ? How many has got their Bible? It's over in 2 Corinthians right here. It is written in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Uh, Paul is talking to the church of, uh, at Corinth and if you're saved, if you're a born again believer, it does not mean that you're getting out of judgment. It just means you're going to stand in a different type of judgment than them that is lost. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 9 of uh, the Bible said, Wherefore we labor that whether present or ab absent we may be accepted of Him. That does not mean that I'm trying my best to stay saved. That means no, I want everything that I do as a child of God uh, to be pleasing and uh, to God and in the will of Almighty God. Amen. I want everything that I do in my life pointing people uh, towards God and showing people that God is the good guy. It don't mean that I'm perfect. It don't mean that I'll ever be perfect on this earth. But it means there's something different about me uh, because I am a child of God. Listen to what verse 10 says, for we must all appear uh, before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according that he hath done, whether it be good or whether it be bad. I believe that when a man dies saved, I believe he automatically goes into the presence of God. And I believe that one day after a while I, that when God comes out on that cloud and he makes that shout that the dead in Christ are going to rise up first and then we're going to be meeting him in the air. Uh, the Lord's going to bring those souls back. Then brand new bodies is going to come up out of the ground and meet the Lord in the air. And then we're going to stand before Almighty God and He's going to give out the good stuff. Amen. Uh, the Bible said that we're going to get things according that He had done, whether it be good or whether it be bad. God's not going to punish you, uh, but He's going to start handing out blessings. i tell you what... Uh, what's it going to be like? A uh, mom and dad uh, that had a child die when they was young, uh, when they stand before Christ, uh, and that child comes walking out uh, from the throne room of God, uh, and they're placed back in their uh, I'm telling you, we'll be known as we're known in God's heaven. Amen. It's going to get good, and it'll be better than you ever imagined in your life. So what does this make me want to do? This makes me want to get out witness. I want all kinds of people to come into heaven. And it ain't going to be because of Shane. It's going to be because we pointed them to the Savior and showed them that He is the Lamb of God. And He is the light of the world. And that He does want you in His presence. Amen. Amen. Do I believe that... Now, you may see this different. That's okay. I ain't right about everything. But do I believe I'll have some regrets? I believe there's a reason that God's going to have to wipe tears from our eyes. Now, this is my personal belief. I believe I'll stand there and know I could have done a lot more for Him. Whew. I believe I'll stand there and know I could have preached one more night at Indian Creek in my first revival. And I didn't. Because I backed out and said I was too tired. And there could have been more people saved. Am I going to have to have tears wiped? Yes, I am. Turn to Romans chapter 14. Whew, mercy. Verse 10. Wait, verse 9. Wait, verse 8. Let's read it all. It's all good. You don't understand the Bible until you put it together. Amen? The devil tried to cut and slice and dice pieces out of the Bible but put it together and it's God's Word. Amen. 
And I believe that His Word's going to stand when the world's on fire. Verse 8 says, Whether we live, we live unto the Lord. Whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live, therefore, or die, we are the Lord's. Ain't you glad of that? For to this end, Christ both died and rose and revived, that He might be the Lord both of the dead and the living. But why dost thou judge thy brother? Why dost thou set it not thy brother? For we shall all stand, we're church, before the judgment seat of Christ. For it is written, As I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. Well, Brother Carter should have done this, Lord. Brother Shane should have done this, Lord. Brother Earl should have done this. There ain't going to be nobody at the judgment seat of Christ. We'll all bow and say, I should have done this, Lord. I should have done that, Lord. I don't even deserve to be in your presence, Lord. I mean, I tell you, I, we're going to stand before a God that didn't die I, just so He could stand there and scold us. He died so He could redeem us. If you ain't saved today, I'd rather you get saved and appear before the judgment seat of Christ uh, because you don't want to stand at the other judgment I'm going to show you in just a second. Uh, you don't want to stand there. I uh, know when I was at Letterbox Baptist Church uh, on October 31st uh, I heard a voice knocking at my heart. Uh, God was telling me to come to that altar uh, and I didn't go uh, and you die this week uh, and you're cast into a place uh, that's called hell. Amen. Uh, and you're reserved there in hell uh, until judgment comes and you'll be tormented while there's weeping and gnashing of teeth come running to this altar ask Jesus in your heart today you don't want to die lost we've pity patted around the idea in the church world for too long this is serious business as I said last Sunday this ain't the three little pigs and the big bad wolf this is your soul and what's faced in eternity Amen. I'd rather stand at the judgment seat of Christ and hit my knees, Brother Glenn, and see my Maker than die lost and end up in a place called hell. How do you know I'm going to end up in a place called hell if I die lost? Because there's a rich man went there according to the book of Luke and he's still there. Amen. And in, in, in God's heaven, there's a man named Father Abraham that, uh, that we uh, preached about last Sunday. And in his lap is a boy named Lazarus that was one of his own. Amen? And they're reserved in a place until judgment comes along. Look at what it says right here. Over here, go with me to the book of Revelations, if you will, right here. To, and I'm the worst at teaching Revelations, but I want to show you about this judgment for those that's unbelievers. So you either stand before the judgment seat of Christ, or you'll stand in the great white throne judgment with all unbelievers. All lost will be judged and shown where they had a spot at in heaven. Where they had a spot at in the Lamb's book of life. But they didn't accept it. Where their plan was laid out before them. I'd be brought to remembrance this service or the service that you turned God away or the moment that you said no to His voice. Look at this great white throne in Revelation chapter 12. 20 and verse 11. And I saw a great white throne and Him that sat on it from whose face the earth and heaven fled away. And there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead small and great stand before God. And the books were opened and another book was opened which was the book of life. And the dead were judged out of these things which were written in the books according to their works. Now here's another one of my personal hang-ups. And you may see this a lot different than I but if there is somebody that is so wicked that they've been turned over to a hardness of heart and a reprobate mind and they're just flat out evil and possessed with the devil, I believe it's going to be a little extra special torment for them for what they've done to the church on this earth. Amen. Now I could be 100% wrong, but I'll tell you this. There's a reason why God said, I want to see what you've done while you're on this earth. The sea gave up the dead which were in it. Death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. That'd be awful to die and go to hell then have to stand there in front of God. Amen? Knowing what's next. And they judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast in the lake of fire. This is what, church? The second death. It is appointed unto man 
wants to die. All this is a preview of what's coming. You better get saved. You don't want to end up in hell. Be tormented forever. Then, then be resurrected up to have to give an answer why you was in hell. You know what? The rich man done had his testimony ready. Go tell my brothers not to come to this place. Didn't work, did it? One in hell and five on the way. There's a song about that. We ought to learn that, boys. That's a good one. Amen? Have to stand there before God knowing I'm doomed. Knowing there's no way out of it. Listen to what verse 15 says, church. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into what? The lake of fire. Well, I'll just burn up and be gone. No, you won't. Eternity don't never end. Amen? There's a special place reserved for the devil and his angels. And if you don't get saved, you're going to fall out in behind him. My goodness. I want to show you where this preview of judgment and what's going to happen is coming from. Where it's coming from. You've got to go back to Genesis if you've got your Bible. And I'm going to close in just a minute because I believe God's working on somebody's heart in this place today. I believe somebody's realized I need to get saved. I need to, I need to get myself ready because I don't want to go to this place that Preacher Shane's talking about. When I die, I want to be in the presence of God and His angels. I want to be in this place that's reserved until God gets all the church up, gets all the bride up. I believe we're all going to walk right into that city, one, one, right all together, amen, and sit down at a marriage supper of the Lamb that's been prepared by God our Father, amen. I believe we're all going to go into the splendors of glory. I believe the street of gold, we're going to walk down the same time. I believe we're going to see the throne in the third heaven. There'll be no sun in the sky because all the glory of God is going to light the city. Amen. Amen. You remember what we read right there in Daniel? We're going to Genesis chapter 19. I'm sorry if I didn't tell you. You remember what Daniel said? He said, And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. What's that mean? Before that sun right there was in the air, do you realize that God had already lit this earth with His glory? Yeah, Did you know that? Yeah. He already lit it with His glory. The same thing is going to light the city of heaven. Amen. Yeah. Now, that's where I want to go. How about you? Amen. That's where I want to go. Genesis chapter 19. A preview of judgment. Abraham, that old man that we told you about, a few chapters after this, we preached about last Sunday and took his only son, Isaac, up on the Mount Moriah to offer him as God said to offer him. So many things was in that chapter that showed us what Calvary was coming. A couple chapters before that, we see in chapter 19 a preview of judgment that is coming. The end of the world. Time as we know it coming to an end. Abraham had also intercessed because he had a nephew named Lot that he loved. And Lot had went down in this place called Sodom and Gomorrah. And Lot had fell right in with his family. I believe Lot was a man that knew better. But Lot was just trying to go along to get along and was just there because he felt like it was the best place. It looked to the eyes like it was a place where I could raise my family. But when he got in that place, church, it was full of sin, amen. And wickedness was on every side and corner of Sodom and Gomorrah. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to say this today. I love the United States of America. I believe God has still blessed our land. I believe if people don't turn to God, we're about to turn into a modern day Sodom and Gomorrah. Amen. Our people's hearts is what's turning it that way. But judgment is coming, and this is a preview of what's going to happen at the end of time. Amen. I but Abraham had went in there, and we'll not go through the whole story for the sake of time. I but if you remember, God appeared unto Abraham. Abraham went out to meet him, and he began to enter intercess for Lot because he knew he was in trouble. The angels had come down and told Abraham, we've come down to see if this cry is as wicked as what it sounds like up there in the throne room of God. Uh, they come down to scope it out. Amen. And Abraham knew it was as wicked as what they thought it was. So he began to think about his nephew Lot. Amen. How many know somebody in this church today by raising of hand? Do you know somebody in your family or a friend or a co 
co-worker that's lost. Amen. You know somebody, every hand just about in this church is going up. We better get to acting like Abraham and start intercessing and talking to God for our friends and our family. Because what we're about to see in the book of Genesis chapter 19 is very soon going to come to pass on this earth. Amen. Judgment of God is coming. I am the Lord. I will repay, he said. He's going to one of these days because man has defiled the very earth that God gave us to live in. Why do you think it's going to have to be destroyed? Because we have tainted it with our sin. Amen. That's why. So Abraham started, I believe, what was it, church at 50? And went down to 5, Brother Rodney. And Lot and his wife and two daughters ain't five. One, two, three, four. And I didn't even have to take my shoe off. I didn't even have to look at Bugs Bunny and say, What's up, Doc? I like socks. Amen. I've got that many fingers. That's four, ain't it? I believe it was more wicked than Abraham even knew it was. Chapter 19, there came two angels to Sodom at even. And Lot sat in the gate of Sodom, and Lot seen them rose up to meet him and bowed himself with his face toward the ground. And he said, Behold now, my lords, turn in, I pray you, into your servant's house, and tarry all night and wash your feet, and you shall rise up early and go on your ways. And they said, Nay, but we'll abide in the street all night. Why didn't Lot want his two guests to stay in the street? Because he knew what was going to happen to them. They was going to get raped. By men. Men raping men. Y'all hear me today? Is they sodomy on this earth? Amen. Is they homosexuality on this earth? Is it not pleasing to God? No, it ain't. Is it sin? Yes, it is. According to the Bible. The Bible said, And he pressed upon them greatly, and they turned into him. And he entered in his house, and he made them a feast, and did bake unleavened bread, and they did eat. And before they lay down, the men of the city, even the men of Sodom, compassed the house round about, both old and young, all the people from every quarter. And they called unto Lot and said unto him, Where are the men which came in to thee this night? Bring him out to us that we may know them. You Bible readers know what that means. And Lot went out to the door unto them and shut the door after them and said, I pray you, brethren, do not so wickedly. Behold, now I have two daughters which have not known man. He was going to sacrifice his daughters unto these men. Let me, I pray you, bring them out unto you and do you to them as is good in your eyes. Only unto these men do nothing, for therefore came they under the shadow of my roof. And they said, Stand back. And they said again, this one fellow came in to sojourn and he will needs be a judge. Well, we will deal worse with thee than with them. And they pressed sore upon the man, even Lot, and they came near to break the door, but the men put forth their hand and pulled Lot into the house to them and shut to the door. God's going to reach down His own hand and pull this church out of this earth. And when He does, He's going to shut the door. Amen. And judgment is here. The Bible said, but the men... And they smote the men that were at the door with blindness, both small and great. Now that should be alarming to us as Christians right here. Small and great. They said, wicked in that place, their children didn't know what else to do but to be wicked like them. Yeah. Hear me today. Yeah. Raise your kids in church. Amen. Raise them in Sunday school. Yeah. Tell them about Jesus. Amen. Amen. We had youngins all over this place last night that was gathered together, fellowshipping with one another, playing board games and this and that and the other, eating cookies and chili. And we was a fellowshipping and we was happy because Jesus was with us. Amen. The Holy Ghost in this church, the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> yeah. That's the way it is. Amen. You, they'll know what you raise them up to know. Yeah. The Bible said... And the men said unto Lot, Hast thou any here besides? Son-in-law, and thy sons, and thy daughters, and whatsoever thou hast in the city, bring him out of this place. For we will destroy this place. Because the cry of them is waxing great before the face of the Lord. And the Lord has sent us to destroy it. You know what this tells me? God listened to Abraham and gave it a chance. But they didn't prove out. 
The Bible said here, Lot went out and spake unto his son-in-laws which married his daughters and said, Up and get you out of this place for the Lord will destroy this city. But he seemed as one that mocked unto his son-in-laws. And uh, when they, the, the morning arose, then the angels hastened Lot, saying, Arise, take thy wife, thy two daughters which are here, lest thou be consumed in iniquity of the city. And while he lingered, the men laid hold upon his hand and upon the hand of his wife, upon the hand of his two daughters, and the Lord being merciful unto him, they brought him forth and set him without the city and it came to pass when they had brought them forth abroad that he said escape for thy life, look not behind thee, neither stay thou in the plain, escape to the mountain lest thou be consumed. And Lot said unto them, Oh not so my Lord behold now thy servant hath found grace uh, in thy sight and thou hast magnified thy mercy which thou hast showed unto me in saving my life I cannot escape into the mountain lest some evil take me and I die. Behold now there is a city near to flee unto. It is a little one. Oh, let me escape thither. Is it not a little one? My soul shall live. And he said unto him, See if I accepted thee concerning this thing also, that I will not overthrow this city for the which thou hast spoken. Haste thee, escape thither, for I cannot do anything till thou be come thither. Therefore the name of the city was called Zoar. The sun was risen upon the earth when Lot entered up to Zoar. God will not destroy this earth until every one of His children are out of it. Amen. When they're out of it. I noticed something out of this that I never noticed before. And I'm going to close in just a second. Lot kept wanting to go to somewhere like this place. Do you realize there is people that are saved that have gotten so far out of the will of God that they desire the world more than they want, they do God? Even in the face of certain judgment and death, they're like, I can't do that. I can't do that. So take me to this place and let me get ready a little longer. God's doing what's best for you, friend. Amen. And He always has. Amen. The Lord reigned upon Sodom and Gomorrah, brimstone and fire from the Lord. Out of heaven. I am the Lord. I will repay. Vengeance is mine. Thus saith the Lord. God rained far and brimstone down. He overthrew those cities, the plain and inhabitants, and that which grew upon the ground. Never fit for anything again. Judgment had came. A preview of judgment. Are you ready? But why his wife looked back from behind and she became a pillar of salt. Been a lot of debate on this. Been a lot of debate on why this happened. I'll tell you why it happened. Because she didn't believe God. Amen. And she looked back and it consumed her. Amen. There's a lot of people have went to an early grave because they ain't listened to God. Hear me today. Amen. I ain't saying everybody. I'm not saying that's why that people get sick. I'm not saying that's why good people suffer bad things, but I'm telling you there is people that know better, that are saved, that have got out of the will of God, that have went to an early grave Amen. because they didn't listen to God. Amen. That's the truth. So which judgment is waiting on you? Am I going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ? Or am I going to stand at the great white throne judgment? i tell you something that's going to happen at both of those judgments. Every knee is going to bow. And every tongue is going to confess. Well, if it's somebody that's never spoke a word in their life, the first words they'll ever say is, Jesus is Lord. Because every tongue is going to confess. Are you ready? Well, we're going to come back tonight to church, preacher. How you know? How you know the rapture ain't fixing to take place right now? How do you know this ain't the last message that will ever be preached on this earth? How do you know? You don't know. But what I do know is this. If you hear a knock, <laughs> you better open up and let Him in. Because He wants to save you. How many's glad they're saved? How many's glad they're going to heaven? How many's glad the first thing they're going to see is their Redeemer? Hallelujah to God. Are you ready? Are you ready? Let's get a song, boys. Because we've looked at a preview of judgment. There's a chance that will be given for all mankind before judgment. What's that chance? 
Well, it's written over in the book of John. Jesus said, My Father which sent me will draw you. Amen. You can't come to Him if He ain't drawing you. No man can come to me except the Father which sent me draw him. Amen. And no man can come to the Father, Jesus said, but by me. Amen. So, a drawing is a personal. Amen. It's a personal, it's a personal invitation. Jesus is saying, and, and you know I've quoted this Scripture a thousand times. Well, here's one thousand and one. Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden. I thought about that, boys, a whole lot this week. There's so many people that is trying their best to do things right. They're trying and they work and they struggle and they it seems like nothing just gets there. They're laboring. And the more they labor without giving it to God, the harder and the heavier the burden gets. Amen. There's a song in that book, I can't remember what it's called, Brother Carter. Are you heavy laden? Are you burdened? Are you heavy laden? That's part of the course, or the, one of the verses. I thought about that this week. I see so many people that are trying. It's alright to try, but first give it to God. When you give it to God, He lifts the burden. Come to me, all you that burden are heavy laden and burden down, and I will, didn't say might, He said, we'll give you rest. You want some rest? Come to God. You here and you're lost today. How many wants to see them get saved? Amen. Can I raise both hands? Amen. Wants to see them get saved. Amen. Give and shout and glory to God. Amen. Every soul that's saved, they stand up and say, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God of hosts. Amen. Our earth is full of His glory. Why do they say that? Because when we're shouting down here, they're shouting up there. Amen. Amen. Glory! They're not going to hell. Glory! There'll not be a higher end up in the lake of fire. Glory! There's a place waiting in heaven for them. Amen. Hallelujah! To the Lamb of God. Amen. And He's worthy of that. Amen. And so much more. Stand to your feet today. you got business to do with God. You better come and do it today. As we sing. Almighty God, He 
you ain't a saint. He's calling you right now. Jesus is not pleading your case. Say, look for our glory and pleading your case right now. Whoa, careless soul. Heed the warning. One of the saddest things you ever see is somebody go there all their whole life and never make a profession of faith. There's no sadder circumstance than that. Knowing that when I'm gonna tell you, I'll let you in on a secret that out that you already know. Not everybody that dies goes to heaven. Amen. At a funeral, you try your best to comfort families and you tell them what you know. I've stood over several bodies. That they never had a bit of testimony. Sad. Never had no hope. I graduated in 1995. As a girl I went to school with. She got killed in a car wreck. About four years after we got out of school. Now this is where the small and great comes in. Your parents... You're leading your children more than what you think you are. I went to this young lady's layout. And the funeral director was had tears in his eyes. And he said, I always do what family requests. And it's killing me to have to do this tonight. And I walked in the funeral home. I figured out why. They playing Hell's Bells. As everybody was passing the casket. Family sitting there laughing, saying, We'll be on the hell behind you here in a few days. Just like he's looking forward to it. If I don't preach you what God puts on my heart, I'll have blood on my hands. The Bible talks about that. Ezekiel said it. God gave it to him. If the watchman don't blow the trumpet, then people's blood's. Uh, and I tell you right now, there's going to be a lot of people stand before God with blood on their hands. That's after that filthy lucre's sake. Trying to see how big the congregation could get. Wanting to be the man of publicity. Blood. I want God's blood on your soul. Amen. I don't want blood on my hands. So I'll never be a popular preacher and I don't want to be. Because this ain't about me, it's about Him. Let's sing that chorus again. Listen to the words of this. Let it stir you, friend. Let it stir your heart. Because it's almost over. There's a lot of people in hell right now that's hearing that. It was sung when God was speaking to their hearts. Now it's a torment them. Now it's a torment. Preview of Calvary. Preview of judgment. If the Lord lets me live to next Sunday, we're going to look at a preview of hell. It's not going to be a popular sermon. But Jesus preached more about hell than He did heaven. Why? Because He don't want you to go there. If God allows me, I may be in His presence by this time next Sunday. If I am, boy, I hope He lays it on somebody's heart to preach it. Because it needs to be. Amen. God bless you today. We love you all so much.